In the vast universe, Earth stands as a radiant pearl, spinning alone in its established orbit. This blue planet serves as the cradle for human birth, reproduction and development, and is the home where we reside. However, with the ongoing advancement of scientific research and a deepening understanding of natural laws, a profound and thought-provoking question arises. How much time does Earth have left for humanity? This question is not only a scientific inquiry, but also one that touches on the fate of humanity, the continuation of civilization, and major considerations for the future. The exploration and resolution of this question will undoubtedly have a significant impact on our current lifestyle, development concepts, and future plans. The Sun, the brilliant star at the center of the solar system, was born around 4.6 billion years ago. During the gravitational collapse of a vast molecular cloud, matter gradually accumulated from the initial chaos to form an extremely dense and hot core, igniting fusion reactions. The Sun began releasing immense amounts of energy and light, becoming the solar system's energy core. In the early stages of the Sun's formation, its internal distribution of material and energy-producing organic matter were in a constant state of adjustment and stabilization. Hydrogen elements were continuously converted into heavier elements through nuclear fusion in the central area of high temperature and pressure, releasing this energy in the form of photons and neutrinos. However, due to the inhomogeneity of material within the Sun and complex physical processes, the brightness and energy output of the early Sun were not stable and experienced significant fluctuations. The Sun's internal structure can be roughly divided into three parts. The core area, the radiation zone and the convection zone. The core is the innermost region of the Sun, with a radius that represents about one-fifth of the solar radius. The temperature here reaches 15 million degrees Celsius and the pressure is approximately 250 billion atmospheres, creating conditions suitable for fusion reactions. Under these conditions, hydrogen nuclei overcome the Coulomb force and fuse into helium nuclei. The radiation zone is located outside the core and is about 35% of the solar radius thick. Here, material transfers energy generated in the core outward by absorbing and emitting photons. Since the density of material in the radiation zone is relatively high, photons are continuously absorbed and re-emitted, making the energy transfer process very slow, taking tens of thousands of years or even longer for photons to reach the Sun's surface from the central region. The convection zone is the outermost region of the Sun, with a thickness of about one-fifth of the solar radius. In this zone, material no longer transfers energy by radiation but by convection. The material forms large-scale convective movements due to thermal pressure within the Sun, quickly transferring internal energy to the surface and then radiating it into the universe as light and heat. The Sun's evolution is a long and complex process. Over time, the Sun's hydrogen is gradually consumed and helium continues to accumulate. When the hydrogen in the core area is depleted, the Sun's core will contract and the temperature and pressure will increase further until conditions ignite helium nuclear fusion. The Sun will enter the red giant phase and its size will rapidly expand to hundreds or even thousands of times its current size. The surface temperature will decrease and the Sun's outer layers will gradually expand, forming a planetary nebula in space. The Sun's core will shrink into a white dwarf with extremely high density and temperature, which will slowly cool over time, eventually becoming a black dwarf, ending its glorious life as the Sun. The gradual increase in the Sun's brightness will first have a direct and far-reaching impact on Earth's climate system. This complex system is composed of the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, cryosphere and biosphere with solar radiation as the main energy source maintaining its function. As the Sun's brightness increases, the solar radiation energy received by Earth will also increase, leading to significant changes in climate elements such as atmospheric circulation, ocean currents and precipitation patterns. 
atmospheric circulation patterns will be severely affected. The increased solar radiation will cause thermal expansion of the atmosphere, changing pressure gradients and atmospheric circulation patterns. The temperature gradient between low and high latitudes may decrease, weakening the intensity of atmospheric circulation, which will affect major global heat and water vapour transports, such as monsoon systems and jet streams. Atmospheric circulation systems may undergo changes in position, intensity and frequency, significantly impacting human production, life and ecological environments. Ocean circulation systems will also be affected. Increased radiation will raise ocean surface water temperatures and alter seawater density distribution, affecting ocean circulation patterns and intensity. For example, the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation could weaken or stop, profoundly impacting global climate, potentially lowering temperatures in Europe, altering precipitation patterns and even triggering global climate changes. Precipitation distribution patterns could also undergo significant changes. Increased solar radiation will enhance evaporation, but changes in atmospheric circulation patterns will make precipitation distribution more uneven. Some areas may experience extreme precipitation events like heavy rain and flooding, while others may face drought and water shortages. This uneven precipitation distribution will pose serious challenges to agricultural production, water resource management, and ecosystem stability. The impact on Earth's ecosystems will be substantial. An ecosystem is a dynamically balanced system composed of biological communities and their living environment. These communities and the environment are interdependent and mutually restrictive. The temperature rise caused by increased solar brightness will directly affect the survival and reproduction of organisms. Many species have specific temperature adaptation ranges, and exceeding these ranges can disrupt their physiological functions, metabolic processes and behavioural patterns. The development rate and reproductive cycles of some insects may accelerate or change due to rising temperatures, affecting their interactions with other organisms. Some warm-blooded animals may face challenges in heat dissipation and water loss, reducing their survival chances. Additionally, climate change caused by increased solar brightness will damage habitats and ecological niches as temperatures rise and sea levels increase, squeezing or destroying many organisms' habitats. Glacier and ice cap melting in polar regions will drastically reduce the living space for polar bears, penguins and other polar animals. Rising sea levels will flood coastal wetlands ecosystems upon which many species rely, causing them to lose their homes. Expanding arid and semi-arid zones will lead to the degradation of forests, grasslands and other ecosystems, endangering many plant and animal species with extinction. Extreme weather events caused by increased solar brightness, such as heavy rains, floods, droughts, hurricanes and heat waves, will directly harm biological communities and lead to mass organismal deaths. These extreme events will also destroy ecosystem structures, causing soil structure damage, soil erosion and nutrient cycle disruption, reducing ecosystems recovery and self-regulation capabilities and potentially triggering ecosystem collapse and mass species extinction. The increasing brightness of the sun will have far-reaching effects on human society and civilization. The development of a complex human society and the progress of civilization largely depend on a stable natural environment and resource supply. The rising solar brightness will significantly impact these essential conditions. In agriculture, increased solar brightness will lead to higher temperatures and altered precipitation patterns, negatively affecting crop growth and yields. Droughts will result in insufficient soil moisture reduced photosynthesis efficiency, pest and disease outbreaks, and ultimately reduced crop yields and quality. Decreased food production will lead to global food shortages and security issues, threatening basic survival needs. In terms of water resources, rising temperatures 
and changes in precipitation patterns caused by increased solar brightness will exacerbate the imbalance between water supply and demand. Higher temperatures will increase water evaporation, reducing available water resources, while uneven precipitation distribution will cause water shortages in some areas and floods in others, severely affecting people. Domestic, agricultural and industrial water usage limit the growth of human society. With respect to energy, rising temperatures due to the sun's increased brightness will heighten the demand for energy, especially for cooling and air conditioning. This will put immense pressure on energy supplies and lead to increased greenhouse gas emissions from energy consumption, further exacerbating global warming. This creates a vicious cycle affecting both economic and social aspects and causing natural and ecological disasters due to the sun's increased brightness. Environmental degradation will significantly impact human economic activities and social development. Natural disasters like floods, droughts and hurricanes will damage infrastructure and affect transportation and communication systems, leaving many people vulnerable. Loss of life and property damage pose significant barriers to economic development. The deterioration of the ecological environment can lead to issues such as the spread of diseases, population migration and social conflicts, affecting societal stability and progress. The Earth's lithosphere is not a continuous whole, but is divided into several tectonic plates of varying sizes and shapes. These plates fit together like a jigsaw puzzle to form the Earth's plate tectonics. The movement of these plates is driven by the Earth's internal thermal convection. Hot material in the mantle rises to the base of the lithosphere, spreading sideways and moving the plates. There are three types of plate boundaries – divergent, convergent and transform boundaries. Divergent boundaries mainly occur in the ocean, where mantle material rises, pushing the plates in opposite directions and forming new lithosphere. Convergent boundaries are regions where plates collide and compress, such as subduction and collision zones, forming mountains, ocean trenches and volcanic structures. Transform boundaries, like the San Andreas Fault in California, are areas where plates slide past each other, often causing earthquakes. Throughout Earth's history, plate movements have caused continents to drift and merge, forming supercontinents multiple times. The formation of a supercontinent is a complex geological process that usually takes millions or even tens of millions of years. When plate movements cause continental plates to collide and compress, the edges fold, rise and deform, creating mountains and plateaus. As collisions continue, the continental plates gradually join to form a unified landmass known as a supercontinent. The formation of supercontinents generates significant heat and energy due to the interaction and friction between plates, leading to frequent volcanic activity and earthquakes. The most recent supercontinent in Earth's history was Pangaea, whose formation and breakup had profound effects on the planet's climate, ecosystems and biological evolution. During the formation of Pangaea, the collision and compression of plates resulted in frequent volcanic activity, releasing large amounts of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, causing Earth's temperatures to rise. Additionally, Pangaea's formation increased land area and reduced ocean area, enhancing the continental climate and altering precipitation patterns and monsoon systems. Plate tectonics influence Earth's climate over the long term, changing the distribution of land and sea on the surface and affecting global atmospheric and ocean circulation patterns. When continental plates form a supercontinent, land area increases, ocean area decreases and the climate becomes drier, expanding desert areas. As the ocean area decreases, its regulatory effect on the atmosphere weakens, increasing climate variability and extremity. For instance, during Pangaea's time, the large land area led to strong continental climate characteristics, causing significant seasonal and annual temperature variations and frequent extreme weather events like droughts and floods. Moreover, volcanic activity from plate movements releases substantial amounts of gases like carbon dioxide, 
sulfur dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, an important greenhouse gas, contributes to global warming, while sulfur dioxide forms aerosols that reflect solar radiation and cool the planet. Therefore, volcanic activity's impact on climate is complex and depends on factors such as eruption scale, frequency and gas composition. Plate movements also affect Earth's topography, influencing climate. For example, mountain formation can block atmospheric circulation, creating precipitation barriers and significant climate differences on either side of the mountains. Plateau formation affects atmospheric thermal and dynamic processes, altering circulation and precipitation distribution. Technological innovation and development are key to addressing Earth's environmental changes. In the energy sector, the research and application of new energy technologies offer solutions to the conflict between energy supply and environmental pressures. Renewable energy sources like solar, wind, hydro and biomass are becoming viable alternatives to traditional fossil fuels as technologies mature. For instance, solar photovoltaic technology is becoming more efficient and cost-effective, making large-scale solar energy use feasible. Wind power technology is advancing, with offshore wind farms opening new avenues to harness abundant marine wind resources. Hydropower technology has evolved from traditional hydropower to include small hydropower and pumped storage, improving water resource efficiency. Biomass technology offers effective ways to utilise agricultural waste and urban garbage as biomass resources including biomass power generation and biofuel extraction. Beyond energy, technological innovations in material science, environmental science and information technology play crucial roles in addressing environmental changes. The development of new environmentally friendly materials can reduce resource consumption and pollution, such as biodegradable plastics, high efficiency insulation materials and innovative building materials. Advancements in environmental science and technology enhance pollution. Monitoring and remediation capabilities, including air pollution monitoring, water pollution detection and soil remediation techniques. Information and technology enables real-time monitoring and data analysis of the environment, providing scientific support for decision-making with technologies like satellite remote sensing, geographic information systems and environmental big data analysis. The concept of sustainable development emerged as humanity recognised the immense pressure traditional development models placed on resources and the environment. It emphasises meeting the needs of the present without compromising future generations' ability to meet their own needs, achieving economic, social and environmental harmony. In terms of economic development, sustainable development advocates for a transition from traditional growth models characterised by high consumption, pollution and inefficiency to more intensive models with low consumption, pollution and high efficiency. Developing a circular economy is a critical path to sustainable economic growth, focusing on resource recycling and waste reduction, reuse and resource recovery to improve efficiency and reduce pollution. In social development, sustainable development emphasises social equity and well-being, enhancing public services such as education, healthcare and culture, and promoting rational population growth and distribution for harmonious and stable societal progress. It also calls for protecting and supporting vulnerable groups, reducing wealth disparities and fostering shared prosperity. Regarding environmental protection, sustainable development stresses the need for resource conservation and management, advocating for reasonable development and utilisation while preventing excessive exploitation and waste. It emphasises protecting and restoring ecosystems to maintain ecological balance and enhance their service functions. Pollution prevention and control are crucial for reducing emissions and improving environmental quality. Promoting sustainable development requires public awareness and education to raise environmental and sustainability consciousness through education, training and media outreach. 
Encouraging green, low carbon and environmentally friendly lifestyles and consumption patterns is essential. International action plans under these frameworks promoting greenhouse gas reduction and climate action through collaboration and technology exchange. In biodiversity protection, international cooperation has established global frameworks through conventions like the Convention on Biological Diversity. Countries work together to protect endangered species, establish nature reserves and combat illegal wildlife trade to preserve biodiversity. In pollution prevention, International cooperation is strengthened through organisations, standards, monitoring and assessments in air, water and soil pollution. For example, international organisations like the United Nations Environment Programme coordinate environmental actions, while international treaties like the Clean Air Convention regulate environmental behaviour, and projects like the Global Environment Monitoring System assess global environmental conditions. However, international cooperation faces challenges such as conflicting national interests, developmental disparities and responsibility sharing. Strengthening international cooperation requires fair and equitable global governance mechanisms that consider countries' developmental stages and circumstances clarifying rights and responsibilities to jointly formulate and implement global environmental policies and action plans. International organisations must play coordinating and leading roles to enhance cooperation's efficiency and effectiveness. Despite significant advancements in modern science and technology, our understanding of Earth and the universe remains limited.